everybody. Thanks for joining me here today. I'm very happy to welcome back our friend Ron Martinson. Hey, Ron. Hey, how's it going? Good. Ron is here to present advanced texture effects techniques, and I'm very excited to see what he's able to show us in a little bit more advanced usage of our new program, Topaz Texture Effects. With that, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Ron. Cool. So yeah, I'm Ron Martin at ronmartblog.com, uh, and I just wanted to quick, quickly mention the site before we get going, and uh, just let you know that up at the top is a quick way to you know, get to my reviews and deals, recommendations, printing series, and discount codes, and all that kind of good stuff. And after the show, I'll be having um, an update to the webinar for some of the things that I mentioned. So be sure to check it out after the show um, or webinar. So let's go ahead and get going here. Um, I'm going to start. Excuse me by opening up a sample image here. We're going to go with this flowers shot. One second. And um, I'm going to start by going over some basic features of the UI. Now, I'm assuming that this is the only product that you have, so I'm running uh, texture effects in standalone mode. I will disclose that I'm using an updated build that's not currently publicly available, but will be very soon. And um, this build is, has most of the functionality, except for what I'll call out um, during the webinar, uh, of what you're used to. It's just a performance improvement um, for the demo. So the other thing I'm going to do is assume uh, you know, that you've already played around with the product a little bit, or you will after the webinar, and, and just kind of go see what's out there. I'm going to show you a lot of uh, what I consider to be the advanced features, kind of hidden, not uh, necessarily easily discoverable features. So to begin with, you know, you start off and you have a lot of um, really cool uh, presets available to you, but navigating these and finding what you're looking for can be a little bit of a challenge. Um, one of the things I, you know, of course, obviously discovered right off the bat was that you have these um, different items for the uh, various collections that are available. So I can go and you know check out Earthy and so on and uh, see that it, uh, effect. But what I didn't realize is that this little dot, dot, dot here actually gives me other ways to search. So for example, I can search by tags, and tags is, gives me a whole different set of options here. And this is really relevant because you know, this is a landscape shot or a macro shot or whatever you want to, uh, category you want to put it in, and I can see uh, presets that specifically apply to that type of uh, image. And so that, I found that actually to be more helpful to me than uh, the default of the uh, collections. The other thing is, is that as you get used to this product, you can mark items as favorite uh, favorites and get to that uh, favorites collection. But you can also, um, you know, you maybe you know, want to search by name or you have some you know, keywords for ones that you've created or ones that you remember. Um, you can actually go in and do a full text search. So I can find um, ones that, for example, have the word summer in it and see a couple of different options um, that apply to that. So um, super helpful, but then there's uh, another important way you can go navigate through. And that's to come in here into the browse option. Now this particular build um, defaults to local, which is a big performance improvement um, over what you currently have, which will go to both. Uh, hitting the community can sometimes be a little time consuming, uh, more so on Windows than on the Mac, um, and those issues are being resolved in this build as well. So with that in mind, um, let's actually do a little bit of uh, quick searching in here and then we'll get onto the, the more advanced 101 stuff. Um, I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on the, the basic things that you can discover. So um, if you're kind of wondering if this is all it's gonna be, now hang in there for a lot more. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is that I can also um, do the same kind of searches and search for um, both uh, categories and within the categories, uh, the different tags. Um, I can do that both locally and community. And so I'm going to actually go here to community, and in this particular case, I'm actually going to search uh, for some of mine. And I, if I search Ron Mart, if you see that author here, it's that's the field that it's searching. Uh, it searches any of these categories and stuff. So if I type in any of this text, the ones that uh, that match any of these categories will show up. And so uh, I'm going to for this particular image use this early morning. Um, preset that I've created. Now this preset is available online so you can download it yourself. Um, I've uh, showed how I created this in my uh, Topaz um, texture effects 
video that is included with my review on my website. So if you want to see how this one was built step by step and um, some more features that uh, are more um, topics that aren't discussed in this webinar, I'd encourage you to watch that video as well. But this preset, you know, I like the way it looks on this image. I spent some time um, kind of tuning things in the way that I like. But there's a cool new thing that's been added to this upcoming, uh, upcoming build that I wanted to make you aware of. And that is, if I come in here and I add a new uh, texture, there's, under the categories, there's this new uh, category called weather. And I'm really excited about this because there's um, rain droplets, which I, I think is a really cool effect. Now, if I first apply this, it looks really horrible. It's all dark and everything. All I need to do to correct that problem is come in and change this to screen, my blending mode to screen. And now you see it's like a nice rain effect on top of it, which is a cool addition to this already um, well-edited image, image. So um, wanted to make you aware of this cool effect. And let's go back and work with a different image now. Next up, we're going to do um, what I consider to be kind of a boring uh, image that I had, um, you know, out with the family, picture of my son uh, horseback riding. Not a very interesting image, um, you know, centered, a lot of things wrong with it and stuff. But, um, you know, it's a family image. It's important and stuff. But sometimes I like to take these and do something fun with them. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of presets that are available. This 1950s print is kind of interesting. But I wanted to call out one really popular one that's online um, that I like and kind of use fairly often. So if I come over here to community, There's this old school preset, which actually I like quite a bit. And so I'm going to go ahead and download that one. And I'm downloading it specifically uh, for a reason, because as you'll notice with this particular image, it's kind of cool effect. It's kind of really neat, you know, old photo kind of look, which is kind of appropriate for horseback riding and so on. Maybe the Helly Hansen jacket isn't too good, but um, let's ignore that for a moment. But it totally obscured my son's face. Not what That's not going to make my wife very happy, so I need to do something about that. So... I can um, go into the uh, editing the um, presets, excuse me, this little button here, I wanted to show you this. this uh, when you apply a layer, you can actually go see, or apply a preset, you can go see the layers that apply to that preset by clicking this thing. When you do that, you'll see all the various layers that make up that preset. And you can go and enable and disable any of these. So you can see the impact that each of these layers has. Now, I noticed when I clicked this, that got rid of that, um, uh, ups, uh, that noise that was obscuring my son's face. And so if I want to keep the effect but not have his face obscured, all I need to do is come in here and edit this layer. And there's this option down into here, down at the bottom, for creating masks. And Black conceals, white reveals, and this is showing me my mask, so I'm going to click on this black, do a brush, and I'm just going to kind of come over here and brush over his face and hand. <clears throat> and you can spend as much time as you want making this perfect or um, as you want, but uh, you know, fundamentally the, the concepts are you can have soft edges or hard edges on your brush, change your brush size, and change the strength or opacity of your brush. And so with this image, um, you know, I've, I've been able to use the effect and uh, actually show my son's face, which is what I really wanted to accomplish. I wanted to do something else like, you know, maybe add a border around it. Not a problem. Come in here, just pick whichever border I like. And I can change the size of these borders and do whatever I want to um, make it my own image. So the presets, you can look at them as a starting point. They're not the final destination. A lot of times you'll need to make changes. And that's the power of this product. You're not stuck with whatever the presets give you. So with that, let's go do another one. We're going to come in here, open up this piano image. And with each one of these images, 
I'm going to try to introduce new concepts. Again, we'll be covering a lot in a very short period of time, so if this is going too fast for you, there will be a recording available after the webinar, and you can also uh, watch the existing recording that I've done available with the review. So um, be sure to check that out, and you can you know, replay these things that are going by too quickly for you. So for uh, the piano here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go My Effects, and I've created this Color Burst 2, um, which is my own edit, and it's available online. And I'm going to come in here and make some changes to that one. So for this image, I'd prefer to have a black border around it, just like we did previously. So I'm going to go do that. And the other thing is, is that we have sun coming in from this direction, and so I'd kind of like a little bit of sun rays coming in there. So what I'll do is I'll come in here to Light Leap, and I'll add the sun effect. Now the problem with this is that the sun's coming in from the wrong direction. Fortunately, uh, they've thought about this problem, so I can come over here and flip that to the other side. The other thing about this is that I like the sun rays, but you know they're, um, I don't like how they're coming off. I think it feels like a little too fake, the density that they have available there. So there's a couple things that I can do. One, I can take these and move them around. The other thing that I can do is I can change the size, and size has this uh, I guess unattended side effect of uh, uh, increasing the spread of the sun rays. So this is something you'll probably find yourself doing quite a bit if you uh, use this light leak feature. Now you'll probably notice one other uh, big problem and that is we've added this light leak but it's gone on top of our border. That's not really what we wanted. So yeah we could brush over that but actually easier and better solution to that is just to take this borders layer and drag and drop it underneath. Now when we do that, it does give us a warning that any masks that you've created on these layers will be reset. I'm not sh quite sure of why that limitation exists, but it's an important one to keep in mind. So you make sure you have all your orders, or layers in the order that you want before going and creating complicated masks. Otherwise, you're going to have to redo some of that work. So in this case, it doesn't really apply. That's fine. So you can see that I have some real subtle light leak added back. My border is on top, and everything is the way that I like it. So let's go ahead and do another one. So this time, we're going to take this shot here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start from scratch. You can always use the presets, but let's just say you know you're you're feeling like you know you've looked at a lot of presets and there's nothing that really suits your needs. Like for this particular one, I kind of want an old school you know selenium uh, look to this, and I haven't really found any presets that do that. I've actually recently uploaded one that's kind of uh, similar to one we'll do here, but um, let's I, I want to just go ahead and create one from scratch. So what I do here is I'll start adding adjustment layers, and these are all the different types of adjustment layers available. These are all non-destructive adjustment layers, if you're familiar with that term from Photoshop. Um, nothing gets applied to your image until you uh, save it out, um, and so um, and you can always delete and reorder, and things, the right things will happen to your image. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to start with just a basic adjustment. And the first thing off, I'm going to just go ahead and turn this into a black and white by doing a desaturation. The other thing that I want to do is I want to kind of make these textures, uh, since there's a stone and a lot of textures in here, a little more harsh. So I'm going to bring out my clarity. Now when I did that, it also made my highlights a little stronger than I wanted here on these rocks. So I'm going to go ahead and back that off just a little bit. And so now I've got you know a black and white that I like, but that's not exactly what I need. The way that I get that kind of selenium look is actually by adding what's called a color overlay. So this color overlay is pretty simple. I'm just putting a color on top. So in this case, I'm going to choose blue. Looks awful, but if I come in here and adjust my opacity, and throw somewhere around there. 
I get the look that I'm familiar with uh, when I see like a selenium uh, image maybe from black and white effects or uh, silver effects or any of those types of uh, black and white products that are available in the market. And so uh, now that I have that, um, I want to actually go add a little texture to this one. So let's do, do a new texture layer. And in this particular case, I'm going to pretend that I've gone through, looked at everything, and I didn't find one exactly like that I like. Or maybe uh, I have a texture that I've been using in other software, and I want to go ahead and start using that in this product. So best way to do that is there's this kind of obscure button here for the texture manager. And what this does is it allows you to uh, import your own textures. You can put them in an existing group like downloaded. So I've done a couple here. But for this one, I'm actually going to go ahead and create a new category. And the reason why is that um, my good friend Trey Ratcliffe has a bunch of uh, presets that he's, uh, he makes available, or excuse me, textures that he makes available. And I want to import some of his in. And I'm not going to spend a lot of time importing all 150 from his Ultimate Collection, but I am going to use one that I actually find myself using quite often. And that's this one here. Uh, it's got a super long name. Um, but you can kind of experiment with these. And you'll see that it copies the texture in. It takes a second, but once you have it in, you're in good shape. You can use this tool to delete and, you know, um, modify, um, excuse me, basically modify your categories, uh, add and remove textures. Once you have it in here, you need to go over here and actually select it. So I'm going to come down here to Trey Ratcliffe. And you'll see that the texture is in there. Now, this texture has a color. And that color is not really what I want. I want the effect without the color. So the way that I can do that is I can come in and desaturate that. So that gets me part of the way there. And then the other thing I want to do is I want to change the blending mode again over here to screen. Okay, so now we have this, this effect that's colorless. It's on there, but it's still maybe too harsh for me. So I can come in and change the opacity and when I do that it gets it gets it about to the level that I want but I've kind of lost some of the detail that I want there well that's where this detail slider comes in I can kind of bring a little bit of it back so I'm getting rid of sort of the haze that it creates um, but I'm also adding that uh, texture back in and so um, once I have this done and you know this is one that I've spent some time working on Maybe I want to create that, uh, save that as my own uh, preset. So I'm going to come in here and call this Selenium 2, because I have another one already out there. Now I tag mine with Ron Mart blog. You don't need to do that. Um, and so I'll come in here and say, I don't know, this is maybe a little gritty. And um, this one, I think, is probably good for uh, nature, maybe landscape, black and white, and fine art. Save that. And now that I have that preset created, the cool thing that I can do, and I can do this for a couple reasons, is I can share this with the community. Now, the obvious benefit of sharing with community is that other people can use it. But there's another you know, sort of selfish benefit for sharing with the community, and that is if I have my machine, um, my desktop machine where I've created this, and I want this on my laptop or maybe my two or three other machines that I have, by sharing it on the community, that's an easy way for me to get it on all those machines. You can always delete your um, presets from the community if you decide that you don't want them to be publicly available anymore. Um, but, you know, leave them up there. They're, they're helpful for other people. So if I click this share to community, it'll take a few seconds, but then it'll actually upload that and other people can enjoy the, the fruit of your labor for that preset that you created. And so once that's done, we're going to go uh, work on another image and kind of show you how to do um, add your own clouds to an image. That's kind of a common thing that people will do in Photoshop, um, but we're going to show you how just using this product you can do that. And this is really important for people who are interested in more realistic images, but not necessarily interested um, in 
harsh uh, textures applied to their image. That's one of the things I really want to make clear is that this is a powerful layer editing product that isn't just about textures. It's not a one-trick pony. You know, uh, on one used to call a product uh, one of their products uh, perfect layers, um, and you can you know, certainly see how this is um, giving you the power of all these layers uh, that are available in here. Another important thing to remember is that if I go and click on any of these, I can sort of see the tricks and things that people have done um, for their existing um, layers, and and I can take some of those just by simply you know, turning them on and off, I can see how they've uh, created a certain effect, and I can use that as something I can apply to my own, or I can take an existing one and you know, re reorder, delete, you know, make modifications to create an exact uh, effect that works for me. You know, for this one here, a really common thing that I'll find when I'm using this product is, I like the texture, but there are some splotches on it that are just really annoying and distracting to me. Again, that's where we can come in here and just you know brush those things out. Oop. What did I do wrong there? Uh, I think that's wrong. Sorry, we're on the wrong layer. My bad. We need to go over here to textures. Yeah, that's one common mistake that I'll make. <laughs> Is you need to be on the right layer, of course. Um, and then once I do that, I can mask that out. Now you'll notice that this one. Um, it's a pretty heavy texture. It's a little harder to do that because I've actually erased too much of the effect. So you have to sometimes experiment. One, you know, a layer like this will be one that's a little more forgiving of removing, others not. So just kind of keep this in mind um, that you'll have to sometimes experiment. That's where bringing in your own effects also uh, is important. So for this particular demo, what I want to do is I'm going to add this color burst. Now color burst is kind of cool, but I really hate this effect in here. And so when I come in here and I turn that off, I'm happier with this. I wouldn't say I'm entirely thrilled with it. There's some things that I'd like to change. But overall, this is a good starting point. It took a image that was kind of dull and blah and made it feel a lot more vibrant. Um, we can always you know, adjust the saturation if that's looks like a little too much for us. Um, you know, We can take some of these shadow areas and brighten them up. There's things that we can do to, to make it our own image, but this is a good starting point. Now for this texture, I'm going to go ahead and turn textures back on, but I'm going to change the texture. And what I've done is I've uploaded, as I previously showed you, a cloud texture. Now I, I really chose this one um, for an important reason because it's, uh, it's not an ideal scenario. I've got a cloud that I like. I'm not sure how well you can see it, but the cloud's in kind of the bottom corner. And when I apply this, I can't see it. It's not really where I need it to be, but that's okay. We can move that cloud up here where we want it and see how we have this harsh lines. Things aren't going the way we want them, but that's okay. Hang in there for a moment. I'm going to come in here, change this to luminosity to get it to blend in a little bit better, and then, of course, you guessed it. What we're going to do is we're going to have a really big brush, and we're going to come in here and just paint out all that stuff that we don't want. So now, in just a matter of seconds, I've taken a cool cloud that wasn't really where I needed it to be and added it to my image and made this, you know, Pretty blue sky was kind of boring. I think a little more interesting. I actually prefer it with the clouds. And let's see, there's actually one other one that I wanted to show you. I believe it's under light leaks. Yeah. And this one here is kind of a sunshine effect. And I can kind of increase the intensity of it a little bit and then do kind of the same thing. And 
so now I've added like a little bit of, of sun come over there. I could have used you know, any various light leak uh, effect, but that one's that's one that's kind of popular. It's this kind of um, what I call the sunbeam effect um, or centered sunbeam effect. So, you know, in a nutshell, what I'm trying to demonstrate um, here is that there's a lot of power in these um, presets, but the power really becomes in uh, what you decide to do with them. Consider the presets as your starting point and then add your own creative touches by going in, modifying the layers. And when, when you spent a lot of effort doing something that is a reusable look, I mean, ones that I've created a mask like this for, maybe that's not a good good one to save. But ones that are fairly generic, um, you know, save that uh, up to the community so other people can share it and, and you can use it on any of your own systems. So next up, what I'm going to do is kind of the same fundamental concept again is I'm going to take this eagle and let's see just going to add color burst you can choose whatever effect you like I'm going to go ahead and turn off this texture and then Again, I'm going to add my own, in this case, an American flag. I'm going to use the brush and I'm just going to come along and paint the eagle out. So you're going to come 4th of July. And this probably isn't the most ideal image to do this with since there's a lot of nature in the image, you know, these foreground trees, uh, branches and stuff, but you kind of get the idea of what we're trying to accomplish here. Um, you know, Facebook avatars with, you know, sports flags or, or whatever, you know, your, your cause is and stuff um, are another way to do it. For the edges, um, a little trick to get better results along the edges is if you use kind of a soft brush and then just kind of erase it. Oops. Sometimes you need to go back and forth a little bit just with a kind of a soft brush. And just kind of work those edges um, using some soft brushes so you can have essentially a pop out and then adjust the strength of the, um, via the opacity of the background. And so we can make that as subtle or as visible as we like. So with that, um, I kind of flew through it a little bit quicker than I expected. Oh, actually, let me show you one, one quick tip and then we'll start uh, fielding some questions. I'm going to go back over here to browse. And one thing that I didn't discover when I was using uh, texture effects was how this window works over here. In fact, when I was using it, it was always in this kind of like zoomed in mode and I didn't find it especially useful. I think that was the default on Windows, not uh, I think defaulted to the to a different view. And so um, if you go over there and kind of click on that window, you can do a control minus or control plus to change the zoom, and you can do a con uh, control zero. On the Mac, I believe you do command uh, plus minus and zero um, to change uh, the view in there. So you can kind of, you know, uh, you're kind of getting an overview of what this effect is doing. But now if I zoom in and pan around in there, oops. Hmm, my panning is not working in this private build that I have here. Um, but normally you can kind of click in there and, and pan around and uh, you know, go see various uh, images, uh, parts of the image, like you know the face or the eyes or whatever. Um, and so that's something that's not uh, especially obvious or intuitive in the product. So I wanted to give you a tip about that. So hopefully that helps answer your question. It does, definitely. And if you guys want to check out his um, or Ron's old videos, you can go to our YouTube channel as well. It's youtube.com slash Labs and just search for Ron's name and it will pull up all of his archived sessions with us. And they are some really good ones, so definitely check it out. Ron, thank you so much. This has been awesome. We're getting a lot of great feedback and a lot of appreciation for you sharing your expertise and tricks with texture effects. Yeah, and I, like I mentioned, if you guys like this one, be sure to check out my review and look at that video as well because there's some stuff that's uh, covered at a little slower pace than here and uh, some things that I may have missed.
if you want to follow Ron, you can follow him at ronmartblog.com. And if you have any questions, you can contact us at webinars at topazlabs.com. And you can sign up for upcoming sessions that are going to include other guest presenters as well as some texture effects training. It's topazlabs.com slash webinars. All right, everybody, have a great day, evening, or morning, wherever you are. And thanks again, Ron. Yep, thank you. Appreciate it. Bye, everyone.